but the forks go on the left. This table's gonna go somewhere unless I fix it soon. Come in. Uh-huh. Oh, hello. Hi, Sonia. I was just thinking about agreement. It's Remember because you're so agreeable, Arthur, that I invited someone else over for supper. Oh, well, that, that's, that's fine. Oh, good. I thought it would be. Come on in. Arthur, this is Freddy from work. Hello, Freddy. Nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. You know, I hope we're not interrupting or anything. Oh, no, no. It's nice, frankly, to take a breather from my writing. Your what? My textbook, writing skills. Oh, uh, yeah. Sonny told me all about your nouns and your verbs and your agreements. <laughs> you know, I never learned none of that stuff in high school. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't like I was going to go to college or anything. Oh, well, I hear you're good with tools. Freddie, maybe you can give me some advice about this table. Oh, see, my we... advice is to clear this table until we get the problem solved. All right. You know, I think I may be able to help you out a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, this should do the trick. All right. Hey, do you have a level? Oh, uh, no. I should have, huh? Yeah, you know, the right tools are real important. I couldn't do anything without them. Freddy. Freddy, you just gave me an idea for the introduction of my book. I did? Yeah, how about this? A carpenter can't build a good table without tools. A writer can't write without using proper tools of grammar. Well, that makes sense. Hey, you know, it only proves what I was telling Sonia earlier. There's no way I can learn that grammar stuff, and there's no way I can write a, a maintenance guide for the, for the store. I wanted you to help me convince Freddy to write that manual, and you're talking him out of well, it. Hold on, wait a minute. If I can learn to use tools, Freddy, you can learn the grammar you need to write a maintenance manual. All right. Look, uh, there's no way I can learn that. I mean, I'm too old to learn. No one's too old to learn. You'll be surprised. Let's take agreement between subject and verb as an example. Let's see if I can remember what you were saying yesterday. Our singular subject takes a singular verb. Our plural subject, a plural verb, Good, right? Good, Sonia. Take a look at this sentence. The pizza cooks. What's that about? What do you mean, what's that about? It's about the pizza. You know, we'll see, the pizza cooks. Well, pizza's a subject, isn't it? Right, a singular subject. Pizza. So the verb must be singular, too. Cooks. Hmm. Seems weird that adding an S to a verb makes it singular. Adding S to most things makes them plural. Maybe the weirdness will help you remember. Let's make the subject plural. The pizzas cook. Now you have a plural verb. Hmm. Well, those are easy sentences, though. True. When the sentences become more complicated, you have to be careful. For instance, would you use a singular or plural verb here? The pizzas in the oven is or are cooking. Hmm, let's see. Well, you wouldn't say the pizzas is cooking. Right. The subject pizzas is plural, even though oven is the noun nearest the verb. Here's a more complicated one. A thick blanket of pepperoni, Tabasco sauce, and red peppers cover or covers them. Look, Arthur. Just an example. What is the subject? What does the covering? Blanket? Oh, so you need the singular verb covers. Excellent. You can't let words in between the subject and verb distract you. Sometimes a clause or phrase set off with commas comes between the subject and verb. Arthur, the most adventurous of eaters, make or makes pizza from whatever is in the refrigerator. <laughs> Still, Arthur is the subject, not eaters, so you need the singular verb, makes. Now, sometimes two singular nouns go together to make a plural subject. What would you do in this case? Tomato sauce and cheese was or were left out of tonight's pizza. Oh, be furious. Those are my favorites. Was or were. Uh, were because the subjects are sauce and cheese. Good. That's a compound subject. A uh, compound subject takes a plural verb. Don't tell me you don't know anything about grammar. There are exceptions, though. Sometimes a pair of words go together to form a single subject, like uh, ham and eggs, profit and loss. Milk and cookies. Milk and cookies, yes. Uh, for instance, Ham and eggs is my favorite breakfast. 
Ham and eggs is considered a singular subject. Yeah, there's always some exception. Not many in this case, though. Are we just going to talk about food all evening, or are we going to eat some? One more thing. When uh, nouns are connected by words such as or, either, neither, nor, not only, but also, the verb should agree with the nearest subject. Neither ham nor beans are on Arthur's menu tonight. Are because beans, the subject closest, is plural. What is on your menu, Arthur? Oh, oh no! Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> My first cabbage pizza. hard, Sonia. <laughs> oh, this is just, it's just too hard. Uh, we never thought it would be easy, but it's important. Hi there. Hello, Arthur. What brings you here? I thought you two might be working on the manual, so I came downtown for lunch. Moral support. Uh, oh, we're gonna need more than that, Arthur. Oh, yeah? What well, seems to be the problem? Well, this first part, with some boiler room maintenance, mm -hmm. the pressure has to be kept at the right level, or you're likely to have a, a boiler that'll explode. Oh, well, what do you have so far? <clears throat> all right, the meter, with all its numbers and markings, are easily read. No, nah, that's, that's good, but what is easily read? The meter. Only one meter, so it needs the singular verb, is. Right. Okay, good. What's next? Okay. Um... Meter and the adjustment valve is located behind the boiler. Uh-oh, I see the problem. Uh-huh. A compound subject, like meter and adjustment valve, takes a plural verb. It should be are located. Good. Okay, let's go on. Oh, this is all giving me a compound headache. Maybe we should just forget it. No, we can't stop now. We just now have a good start. Now, come on, let's plow ahead with this thing. Okay. Keep the meter under 200 degrees to save energy. Boiler costs are high and profit and loss are calculated every month. All right, remember, profit and loss is a single idea. It takes the singular verb, is. Right. Okay, what's next? Neither the night watchman nor other store employees are permitted to change the setting. That's right, because the verb should agree with the nearest subject. Hey. <laughs> One point for us. You know, I'm learning. Yeah. Sonia, let me take you to lunch. Oh, it's awfully hot in here. Ah. Oh. Have you seen Freddy? Hmm, remember? I gave him the day off to work on his maintenance manual. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh it is hot in here. You know, that's funny. Hmm. Freddy said that if the temperature went too high... The boiler! <gasps> oh. Ask yourself who or what is doing the action in a sentence. Are you talking about a unit or more than one? For instance, a couple. A couple can act as a unit, or it can act as two separate units. The couple was planning a honeymoon. They are one unit planning together. But the couple were of differing opinions about the route. Now they are definitely two separate units with different ideas. Other collective nouns such as crowd, group, staff, or majority follow the same pattern. The majority of couples travel to the mountains on the interstate parkway. In that case, majority is treated as a plural 
because it's the action of many traveling that is emphasized. However, you would also write, she replied that the majority is wrong because here you're emphasizing the majority as a single unit of people of one mind. Just keep in mind the question, how is this collective noun being used? Come on in, it's open. Hey, Hi, I'm... Sonia. You will never, ever guess what happened today. What? We almost had an explosion at the store. An explosion? Yes, yes, but Mrs. Johnson and I got down there just in time to the boiler room, and I remembered what Freddie's manual said. Ah, oh, Freddie was here working on the second part of it. Hmm. Then we fixed the table. Oh, well, how is his manual coming? Once he decided good grammar helps you say exactly what you mean, he started learning fast. He's remembering what he already knew, and it seems to go even faster. Oh, good. I'm glad you two are helping each other. Speaking of helping and working together, would you try out these examples uh, for me? Okay. Hmm. The mumps are a contagious disease. That should be is, because the subject refers to one disease. Right. I've never heard of anyone having one mump. <laughs> the class is going to Washington. Now, in this sentence, is is right, because the class is acting as a single body. Okay, but what about the next one? The class disagree on whether to fly or drive. Should it be the class disagrees? No, because here, class refers to individual students. The class doesn't disagree as a whole. People in the class disagree with each other. Oh. If, if the whole class disagreed with another class, then you would consider it singular. I see. Hmm. Then in this sentence, five are registered for the Washington trip, the plural form is correct. Yes, but how about this next sentence? Five is the correct number. Ah, I'm not sure. Should it be five are the correct number? No, you are referring to the number five as a unit. A single idea. It takes a single verb. Five is the correct number. One hundred is the number expected to attend. Ah, all right, all right. I understand now. Good. It'll help you with your writing. I write home every week. You know that. In English? <laughs> Yes? I think we need to write a report about the boiler incident. A report? Where do I start? Well, I think you should start by asking yourself some questions. Like who, what, when, and why. Good. <laughs> now put down a list of questions the report should answer. Okay. Here's the questions this report mm. should answer. What's the losses to the store? Who is those people responsible for the boiler overheating? Why was the temperature and the pressure rising so quickly? Hmm. You've hit on some key issues, but you're still having trouble making your subject and verbs agree. Oh, brother, now what? Sometimes the subject comes after the verb, as in questions or sentences beginning with here or there. Then you should be careful with agreement. Look at your first sentence. Here's the questions this report should answer. That <laughs> sounds fine to me. People say that a lot in conversation, but that doesn't make it right. Well, how do you know if here is singular or plural? That doesn't have anything to do with it. Here can never be a subject. In sentences like this, the subject comes after the verb. Questions is the subject. Oh. Turn the sentence around. The question is here? No, no, it should be the questions are here. 
Then you would write, here are the questions. Oh, okay. Not here's. Here's is a contraction meaning here is. I see. So in the next sentence, I should say, what are the losses to the store? Right. Losses is the subject. And who are those people responsible for the boiler overheating? But uh, what about the next one? I'm not sure. Temperature is singular. Yes, but temperature and pressure make up a compound subject. Ah, uh, and compound subjects take plural verbs, so it should be were. Why were the temperature and the pressure rising so quickly? Right. I've been thinking. Sloppily spoken English is the root of many problems people encounter in their writing. For instance, if somebody says, here is the keys, it sounds okay. But since keys is a plural subject, the proper form would be, here are the keys. In daily conversation, we're often in too much of a hurry to worry about subject-verb agreement. Still, you can't let little things like that get into your writing. When sentences begin with here or there, uh, who, what, when, where, why, the subject sometimes follows the verb, so make sure they agree. The boss asked, how's the interview going? <laughs> what is the subject? Interviews, right? So we need a plural verb. The sentence should be written, how are the interviews going? I hope you noticed another mistake in this sentence, right? A punctuation error. There should be a comma separating the quote from the rest of the sentence. How's the report coming? Oh, I don't know. It is so hard to get straight answers from people, you know? You're right. So I just ended up writing, and this is what I said. Each of the employees have said no comment. When you use the word each, remember that it means each one. So it takes a singular verb. Oh, so I should have said each of the employees has said no comment. Right. Thumbs up? <laughs> Thumbs up, Sonia. Not only must there be agreement in number between subjects and verbs, but also in person. Verbs come in first, second and third person. First person singular is the form with I. I am. And first person plural is the one that uses we. We are. In second person, both the singular and the plural use you are. And in the third person singular, he is, she is, it is. But the third person plural is they are. When you have a compound subject, the verb agrees in person with the nearest subject. Either you or I am going crazy. When you have a negative and a positive subject, as we do here, you, not I, are going crazy, the verb agrees with the positive subject, you are going crazy, not I. And if this is driving us crazy, we can look in the workbook. The rules are all in there, plus examples to practice. Actually, I'm a little crazy for something to eat. Let's see what we got in here. Mm -hmm. Macaroni and cheese, my favorite dish. Let's see. Um, 250. Uh, 350. 500. Okay. Well, let's see. Where were we? Come in. Hello, Arthur. Hi. Yo, Arthur. Hi, Freddie. 
Ah, so. So? Is your chapter about done? Yes, how about your report? Oh, that. Um, we just decided to forget it. Oh? Uh, before I took the day off from work, I showed Sonia how to check the meter, and I asked her to call me. I forgot, until everything was getting hot. So it was my fault. The report would have incinerated me. Mm. Incriminate. Yes, that. But it won't happen again. Well, anyway, I've got to get busy and work on my maintenance manual. You know, there's a lot that people don't know about, about elevators and, and their maintenance. Well, I don't mind typing. I know. I will type exactly what you say, okay? What are the important ideas you need to write about? Okay, let's see. The elevator has all these pulleys and cables. They need constant attention and upkeep. Tension and upkeep. Mm -hmm. Good. What else? All right, oiling the pulleys and gears are necessary. There's two main pulleys in each shaft. Pulleys in each shift. Okay, you've got those ideas down. Anything else? All right, the permit and license is updated annually. Two thousand pounds is the capacity of an elevator. Capacity? A building? Wait, of okay. one elevator? Yeah. All right. A building inspector mm -hmm. and firemen inspect the elevator. Well, that's reassuring. Okay. Ah, that's a good start. Now, let's go back and decide what's the main idea of all this to write about in the beginning sentence. Mm. Then we'll use the remaining sentences to support or add to it. It seems to me that those first two sentences just about say what it's all about. If I could write them in one good sentence. How about this? The elevator, with all its pulleys and cables, needs constant attention and upkeep. OK. Is that verb right? Pulleys and cables needs? Ah, uh, that doesn't sound right. Wait a minute. Pulleys and cables are not the subject of that sentence. What is? Hmm. Oh, I see. Elevator is a subject. That sounds right. Elevator needs constant attention. <laughs> yeah, that's a good main idea sentence. Now what do I write? Look at your next two sentences. Oiling the pulleys and gears are necessary. You know, it seems like I'll write about oiling the pulleys before I say that there are two pulleys. Maybe I should say there's two main pulleys in each shaft before I tell about oiling them. That sounds like a good idea, Freddie. Okay. There. But let's look carefully at those sentence structures. You've written that there's two main pulleys in each shaft. Pulleys is a subject. So, oh, my sentence should be... There are two main pulleys in each shaft. Oiling the pulleys and gears are necessary. Check the sentence carefully. Look for the subject. Let's see. Pulleys and gears are necessary. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what it means. Oiling is necessary. So I should change the verb, and it should read, oiling the pulleys and gears is necessary. Hey, it really is important to check over what you've written, looking for these kinds of things. You know, you're absolutely right. That's one of the most important parts in the writing process. We all have to do it. Now, let's look over the rest of the sentences you've written down. All right. The permit and license is updated annually. Uh-oh, I see that one already. Compound subject, see? Permit and license. That's right. Oh, it takes a plural verb. Are. 2,000 pounds is the capacity of one elevator. Right. You remember that a weight is a unit, and therefore considered singular in the subject. Well, I think it is kind of exceptional that both these people inspect the elevator. And if you're writing about an exception, you usually use the word but. I got it. How about this? Not only a building inspector, 
but also firemen inspect the elevator. That's great, Freddy. And you remember that in sentences with subjects connected by not only or but also... The verb agrees with the nearest subject. You see, this writing is getting easier for you with practice. Mm -hmm. Would you like to try? Come on. Oh, boy. Look at those two agreeing as well. Just like subject and verb. Arthur, mm. are you incinerating something? Incriminate. No, 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 burning, Arthur, burning. Uh, what? Uh. Oh. Uh. Another disaster. We're never going to eat. Uh, I, I have an idea. Ouch. Why don't I go to the deli and get something to eat, and then you two can keep working? Hey, don't get any of that, that wild stuff. You know, some of it doesn't agree with me. They don't put subject and verbs in their food. Yeah, we can all agree about that. Okay, what'll it be? <laughs> 